the questions here. The first question, I, I first of all, thanks to Cerebellum team for collecting those questions, organizing this session. I understand it's not easy, but if anybody can do it, it is the team Cerebellum which could have done this. And we are very blessed to just sit and discuss this. This was the first question which was universally given and discussed in our Telegram group. I have elaborated it. So they had spoken about a high speed vehicle collision with dashboard injury. Friends, the moment you hear the word dashboard injury, the thing that should come to your brain is a posterior dislocation of the hip. We had done this discussion. We were sure about this coming in multiple exams and they had given an image showing posterior dislocation where the head is above the acetabulum. They had given the options of acetabular fractures, posterior hip dislocation, anterior hip dislocation. I'm not very sure about the fourth option which was there, but for the completion, the team has given us interdocantric fracture. So this is something which came as an image in the exam and I hope people got this correct. So this was the first one which was there. All right. Secondly, the there was another mention in the telegram group that there was a question on acetabular fracture. I'm not sure whether there was a separate question or the student who marked acetabular fracture were relating it to this question as there. Overlap between ortho and anatomy and we always say that around the shoulder, right? Around the shoulder, the axillary nerve goes. Again, a very pet repeat question. This is also called as a regimental batch sign. A nerve injury question is always asked there. This time it was a normal relationship that is anatomical relationship that was asked to you. So this is the second question which was there. I am, I am just relating it to these are the set of questions which you expect in any exam in my country, whether it's NEET, it's INICT or it's FMG. This is something which is going to be always there, right? The third question they had asked about, they had shown an image uh, showing you of tibia or femur. There is a lot of discussion going on. But the majority of the students, they say that the question was of the image of the tibia. So there was a tibial image, all right, and they had shown a history of osteomyelitis. So whenever you have a tibial image with osteomyelitis, what should come to your brain is Ewing sarcoma. Some students do mention they had given Codman's triangle, some say onion peel appearance, either of the case, right? If it was tibia, if it was diaphysis, irrespective of the age, the answer is going to be Ewing sarcoma. If it was femur, if it was diaphysis, irrespective of the any periosteal reaction, answer is again going to be Ewing sarcoma. If they don't give you any periosteal reaction, they only talk about osteomyelitis like scenario, the answer obviously is Ewing sarcoma. But yes, if they talk about lower end of femur, which some students have mentioned, they show you Codman's triangle, then the answer is going to be osteosarcoma. So for all the purpose, we will take this question as Ewing sarcoma because majority of the students, they mentioned that the question was about Ewing sarcoma. Just for a comparison, another view that came in the telegram group. So I have kept this question. This is how an osteosarcoma question will look to you. Lower end of femur, the arrow points out to the triangle, lifting up Codman's triangle, talking about the osteosarcoma. Then there was a question showing swelling of a metacarpal. I could not get in a short time the swelling of the second metacarpal bone which they had shown. But if they show you swelling of a bone, it should classically come to an enchondroma. I understand brown tumor can be there, but most common tumor of bones of hand and feet is enchondroma. That's a classical dictum that we should remember. So we have to remember that this is going to be a tumor of the finger or the digits and we should mark it as enchondroma. Then we came on to the question that we came in the exam was about the swelling of the knee joint with multiple loose bodies. So whenever there's a swelling of the multiple loose bodies that comes to you, that is going to be marked as synovial chondromatosis. Now, this is something which is out of the box. I don't expect anybody to answer this question. Fortunately, it's a part of our PDF of the main class, the marathon and uh, that everybody, but trust me, it is something which is, which has been asked beyond 10 years. We always say that in cerebellum, last three years is a must. Doing five years is preferable. Dr. Praveen has been advocating that 10 years is something that should get a grip on. This was beyond 10 years. Fortunately, I did not delete this image of synovial chondromatosis of the knee and the shoulder from my presentations. This came from the presentation, but honestly, it is long gone PYQ. That is how we should relate it. So these were the questions that came. There were some very obvious questions that came in the exam. They had spoken about the shoulder uh, ossification, which was about 
18 years of age but this is something which is there we will be talking about things in detail when we get you a proper presentation of the recall with better options but just to set the tune and pass on to better to none better than universe boss right let's have a look at the questions he's going to talk about about uh, psychiatry and one more thing which i want to tell you here is which is very important as he pointed out the questions were spot on they were clinical ortho is principally has been image based and they were image based questions all the very best to all of you for your results just like the last time we are expecting a great result this time also and even better you know because we have seen the students keep on surprising us best wishes from the whole cerebellum team the faculties and thank you very much for having me here thank you Thank you.